Okay, let's do a teardown of the world-famous Cloudlifter CL1 microphone activator. This is hands down the most popular product in this category. As you probably know, this device is frequently paired with quiet microphones like the legendary Shure SM7B. 2023 has been an interesting year with the 4th gen Focusrite Scarlett interfaces coming out. The new 4th gen Scarlett interfaces apparently have enough gain to successfully drive a SM7B on their own, with the exception of the Solo which doesn't have the preamp upgrades of the 4th gen 2i2 and higher. I mentioned the Focusrite Scarlett line purely because of the general popularity. Also in 2023, Shure released the SM7DB microphone, which retails for $100 more than the SM7B. This new mic includes a preamp that apparently Shure has licensed from Cloud. Anyway, on with the teardown. As we get into this, I'll take note of all the relevant components and list them in the video description below. The case for this thing is really nice. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the most expensive part of the device. Okay, here's the board. It uses surface mount resistors and capacitors in the 1206 package size and two LSK389C JFETs in what I think is referred to as the CAS code configuration. I think I pronounced that right. It's basically a two-stage amplifier. Each LSK389 chip has two JFETs in it for a total of four JFETs used in this circuit. The datasheet for the LSK389 explicitly says that it's designed for use in audio amplifiers and preamps. The LSK389 comes in four variants, the A, B, C, and D. The Cloudlifter CL1 uses the C variant, which doesn't seem to be available from the usual big distributors like Mauser and DigiKey, at least not in the surface mount form factor. I see it available from a company called NAC Semi. I'll put a link in the description below. Those little red blobs that you see under some of the components are dots of epoxy that are used to hold the components on. I think this is typically done when using wave soldering. I'm not super familiar with that. If you have any thoughts, please drop a comment. It looks like the ground fill has some disconnected islands of copper. This seems a little weird that they didn't remove those, but full disclosure, I'm not an expert. If anyone is more knowledgeable about this, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let's see if we can flip the board around and get a look at the other side. They use high quality XLR connectors made by a company called Neutrik. It looks like they placed the connectors in the case and then soldered the board, basically locking everything into place. To flip the board over, you have to unscrew the connectors from the case and carefully rotate the whole assembly. It looks like they have a ground fill on the bottom as well. There's also a lot of unused headers and jumpers going on here. This seems really weird that they would include these because of the added cost. I suspect all the resistors are all high accuracy thin film resistors. It's nice that they're all labeled. It looks like the values are 3K, 33K, 22 ohm, and 39 ohm. There are also three resistors that aren't used and are connected to unused header pins. It looks like they're 150 ohm and 1.5k. Here's an overlay that shows the pins that are jumped together and the unused parts and traces. The only components that aren't labeled are the two capacitors. To get an accurate value, we need to measure them outside of the circuit. I'll use some solder wick to soak up the exposed solder on the ends of the cap. Then I'll use my hot air station to remove it. Man, that epoxy is really holding this thing down. And I totally fried the cap. Way too much heat and for way too long. I'll try and measure it anyway just to see what kind of value I can get. I built this cool LC meter from a kit. I'll drop a link to my assembly video for this in the description below for anyone who's interested. Okay, so it says 1.3 NF. I definitely cooked that thing way too long, so I don't think I can trust that value. I tried taking the other cap off using less heat, but I'm an idiot and I fried that one too. Man, this is a real bummer. Don't worry though, I won't leave you guys hanging. I bought another CL1 because I just want to know the value that they're using. This second cloud lifter has a surprise lurking inside. It uses a totally different board design with the exact same circuit and components. It has a ground rail around the perimeter of the board instead of ground fills like the other board. It also doesn't have the unused headers and resistors that the first board had on it. Spoiler alert, I ended up buying a third one and it also had this more minimal board design. I think what's going on here is that the more minimal design is the actual CL1 design, and they likely temporarily used the board from another product line such as the CLZ. This would explain all the extra header pins. This could be the result of a supply chain issue or something. Either way, they appear to be the exact same circuit. 
It's also really convenient that this one doesn't have any epoxy under the components. This board was probably reflowed. This time I'm going to avoid the hot air and see if I can just carefully pop the caps off with my soldering iron. It would be super nice if I had some hot tweezers. Okay, I don't see any visible damage on the cap this time. Let's measure it and see what kind of value we get. I'm getting like 584 to 586 PF. I want to desolder the other cap so I can use that to verify this value. Sadly, I slipped with my iron and just grazing the surface of the cap created visible damage to it. And now I can't get a reading off of it. Hmm. Let's take a step back here. I assumed these were ceramic capacitors, but these look different and they seem to respond to heat differently. After some googling, I discovered that these are plastic film capacitors, and they are preferred for audio circuits because of their stability. Nice. Plastic film caps are apparently also very sensitive to heat. This explains why I keep destroying them. It also doesn't help that my desoldering technique is a bit sloppy. This makes me not trust any of the values that I've measured so far. So in the name of science, let's try this again, but with a different approach. I'm not going to touch the board with heat at all this time. I'm just going to cut the traces with my X-Acto knife and measure them in place without desoldering them. Yes, it's true, three cloud lifters were harmed in the making of this video. This third board is the more minimal design that I believe to be a true CL1 board. Interesting how this one has the epoxy dots that the last one did not. I'm checking for continuity to make sure that I actually severed the connections on the board. Okay, let's measure the caps. I'm getting about 1.7 NF. Sweet, I'm getting the same value for both caps. Repeatable results, that's exactly what we want to see. I'm pretty confident that this value is correct. As it turns out, Panasonic is basically the only manufacturer that makes plastic film caps in the 1206 package size with this value. I bought some 1.5 and 1.8 NF caps and measured them with my LC meter. The 1.8 NF caps measure at the same 1.7 NF value as the caps on the CL1. They also look identical. Alright, well mystery solved. Just a reminder that I'll put all the links to the parts in the video description. Alright, on with the teardown. Back on the first board that I started with, I'm going to desolder the JFETs so we can get a look at the traces underneath. Now you can see how the JFETs are connected and how they connect to the rest of the circuit. There's really nothing magical about this device. It's a pretty simple amplification circuit with not very many components. It seems reasonably well executed and is generally well liked by streamers and other YouTubers. I'm not an audio expert so I can't evaluate the technical soundness of the circuit, but here are my observations of this build. The JFETs alone cost between $5 and $10 a piece. You could probably get better volume pricing, but this part is still comparatively expensive, and there are two of them on the board. The capacitors are appropriate for an audio circuit of this type, and they use quality name brand XLR connectors. The case is really nice looking and hefty, and it definitely earns a place on your desk and won't slide around. You can get similar functionality in a cheaper package from other manufacturers such as Clark Technic or Triton Audio's Fethead. Which one is best is debatable, for what it is, I think Cloud has put together a solid build. In the next video, I'll create the schematic for the CL1 circuit using the open source software KeyCAD. And if there's time, I might also lay out a custom PCB for fun. If that sounds interesting, you might want to consider subscribing. Either way, I'll put a link to the second video in the description below. Alright, see you in the next one.